what I know for sure is that speaking your truth is the most powerful tool we all have. I've had rainbows in my clouds. And the thing to do, it seems to me, is to prepare yourself so that you can be a rainbow in somebody else's cloud. We all really, really love one another. Deep down, we all love one another, and we need to get back to that. Hi, welcome to the Authentically You podcast. I'm Dr. Julie Ducharme, back for another episode. And as you guys all know, we are always talking about people who are doing authentic things. And I'm so excited today to have Ali Stark with us. She is someone that I, I don't know how we got connected, somehow through Facebook, right? And and uh, we are doing a big event, She Talks, which we'll talk more about that later. But I suddenly found out that Allie is huge into the women's networking space and she's doing some amazing things. And so I was like, we got to get on this. We got to talk about this. We were just talking off screen um, about women and networking and the lack of. So Allie, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Well, as I'm sitting here on one of your websites, I know you have multiple ones and we'll talk about all those <laughs> going on. You talk in here in your bio that says you have an entrepreneurial spirit that reaches back to the county fireworks stand that you ran as a young girl in Nebraska, which I love. I grew up in the country, and I, too, was like wheeling and dealing, you know, selling berries and whatever I could. <laughs> so this just is near and dear to my heart. Um, your first real business opened in 2013, which is called Moxie Estate Sales. And previous to opening that, you had an experience in this field beyond growing up around sales and auctions, and you saw a need for the service, and you created it, which is the, the most amazing thing we do as entrepreneurs. We see a need, we fill a need. I think I totally just stole that line from a Disney movie, but <laughs> we're going to roll with it. Disney, don't sue me. Um, and you have a passion for empowering women, which, okay, now we're just, I think, like we're, we're sisters, we're soul sisters, because that is my passion as well, entrepreneurship and empowering women. Um, so let's talk about this. And, and we, I was getting this straight because you have so much stuff going on. I wanted to make sure that, you know, this is near and dear to my heart too. We, we said, when someone asks us a question, what are you doing? We're like, well, what do you <laughs> want to know? So let's, How much you got? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So let's talk about first, you know, um, Gilbert girlfriends or, or girlfriends in general. Um, this is a network I didn't know about, but I, I need to join it because I know it's it's growing. So tell us about how girlfriends and Gilbert girlfriends all got started. Yes. All right. So um, my partner Liz Nor Norwood Eveland um, moved to Gilbert and um, was needing friends. Basically, she was a single woman um, of a certain age, and so you know, you don't, you're not in college anymore. You're not, you know, and you don't have young kids where you might meet, you know, other moms or whatever. And she just wanted a couple girlfriends to go to a movie with. And so she put it in a local community, uh, Facebook page and said, are there any women's groups that, you know, out there that I can join to, to make friends? And all these women were saying, no, but we need one. We need one. We need one. So she decided to create one. And, it just took off really quickly. And so she asked me to help and we've been at it for over four years now. And Gilbert's the first group, like I said, um, it has close to 15,000 members right now. And um, what happened was it's an event social group. So what happened was all these women are posting pictures on their Facebook about all this fun events we're doing and, you know, dress up events and, and happy hours and book clubs and, and their friends in other cities were saying, what is this? How can I get a, be a part of this? So um, we started creating groups in, in all these different cities and states and, and now we're close to 60 different groups in um, 18 states, I think, and, and into Canada. Um, and so, yeah, those are all part of the Good Girlfriend Connection, which just brings them all together. And those are, yeah, those are just Facebook groups wow. that sole, sole intent is to socialize and, and make friends and support one another. No, um, you know, no business networking, no selling. It's just for women to connect and friendship. I love that. And I know I was really guilty of this. I would get really busy with work, with my kids. And I was not having any connections with girlfriends or girl time. I, I just wasn't. I felt like it wasn't 
didn't fit into my schedule. But at the same time, I found that I, I don't think that was very healthy for me, especially mentally. I really needed to connect with other women. Um, and I, I, I realized having two little ones and running businesses that I was really desperate for connection. And I know for me that's important. I mean, even during COVID, you know, the, the most important thing, me and my, my girlfriends, we were like, we got to stay connected because I was like, I'm going to lose my mind if I yeah. can't be connected with my girlfriends and what's going on. And so, and, and I know guys are different. I mean, my husband's totally fine being at home, watching TV and drinking a soda, you know, where I'm like, let's go do something together. Let's have some girl time. Let's do a pedicure, you know, or just go get drinks or whatever. So I, for me, I felt like I need this for mental mental health. And, and how do you feel about this? Because I know that this was a big concern during COVID. Absolutely. Um, I think that our groups, all of them all across all the different states, grew a lot during that time because people found that they were missing those connections. And I think that um, where the groups really stand out is most women – have connections because of what they do or who they're married to or who their child is. Mm-hmm. You know, like you were saying, you, you know, you have your friends, of, you know, so you have a, you're, you're a soccer mom taking your kid to soccer and you might have a conversation with other, other, other women. Uh, how, you know, how do you get the grass stains out of the shorts or, <laughs> you know, or, you know, whatever it is, or you go to a, you know, a networking event and you're talking about what you're doing. You know, when do you get to have a time where you're just talking in your voice? You know, I'm just Allie. I'm not someone's mom. I'm not someone's wife. I'm not what I do for a living. I'm just me. I'm coming to you authentically so we can connect on that level. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm not trying to, you know, we're not talking about our kids. And it really is so good for your mental health to reconnect with who you are internally and, you know, in in the depth of your soul and not not whose mom you are, whose wife you are, what you do for a living, who you are. Yeah. And, um, and I think that's a huge fallacy that some women think that it's a strength to not need anybody. You know, I, I'm a strong woman. I don't need anybody. Well, the biggest strength of all is admitting that that's not true. Yeah. <laughs> the biggest strength of all is being vulnerable yeah. and, and, and opening yourself up to someone. Um, and and that's that's what... I try to do. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I mean, and it's it's very much something that I'm guilty of. You know, early on in my marriage and with kids, I very much felt that I needed to do it all, that my house needed to be perfectly clean, that everything needed to be done, that my kids always needed to look, you know, prim and proper. I mean, it was just a really unrealistic view. And mind you, we watch commercials where the house is perfectly white and everything looks great and the family looks perfect. And mind you, everyone on Facebook edits their pictures. So I remember thinking like, God, they look so good from 20 years ago that they haven't gained a pound, you know. I mean, and, and, and for a while I didn't realize people were touching up their pictures and trimming themselves down and editing them. And, you know, I, I, I really, really very much for a long time lived that, that type of mentality. And it was really unhealthy for me. It was exhausting too. It was exhausting trying to keep my house clean and the laundry done and run my businesses and keep my children, you know, prim and proper and make everything look great. And so I definitely agree with you that, you know, and and I think it's part of a cultural expectation, right? I mean, what do we see on TV and commercials? Perfect women, right? I mean, perfect women who get paid to work out eight hours a day, (laughs) you know, (laughs) where if I get 20 minutes a day to do something, I am so excited. (laughs) Like, even if it's, you know, running up and down my stairs (laughs) in my house. (laughs) Um, Thing that you just said is what um, I coined on uh, for my Moxie Inspire as the, what I call the swan complex. mm. And I feel, and that's why I made the swan my logo is because I feel like, Women, whether it's our own filter or whether it's it's truly what society expects of us, feel like we have to always put on a certain, you know, facade of being everything's together and everything's perfect. And, you know, my kids only get straight A's and they're star of the football team and my house is always clean and, 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 and trying to look like all the time, you know, this regal swan on top of the water. And what I wanted to do is create a, um, a community of women who, you know what? 
It's his private community. I'm going to be an ugly duck cleaning in this community, and I'm going to tell you, I don't have it all together. In fact, I'm not even close to having it all together. I need help. And other women are going to go, girl, ah, same. And then you're just going to talk and support each other because yeah. – um, you know, whether as you know, whether society really expects us to be those perfect swans or whether that's something that we've just ingrained in our own minds, um, it just needs to end. You know, we just need to just to uh, to come together and realize it's just not the way it is. Yeah. Yeah. I, I always think about as you talk about swans and the ugly duckling and how the ugly duckling eventually became this beautiful um you know, beautiful, not ugly duckling anymore. I, I think about that as us, you know, that we're, we're in that constant stage of evolution of growing and eventually going out of this awkward, ugly duckling stage into a beautiful swan. And, and that I imagine these beautiful swans, all different colors and shapes and sizes, because it is very true. And, and it's funny, I'm 43 and I feel like, God, I'm still, I'm still growing. I'm still learning. I'm still, you know, I, whenever I learn a new like hack, I'm like, how did I not know? Like, have I been the only person not been doing this? You know, someone be like, oh, you haven't been doing that. I'm like, well, no, I've been doing it the hard way. <laughs> and so, <laughs> I, I love that you're saying, hey, you get to come and you get to just be you. You don't have to talk about your kids, your husband, not that we don't want to, but you know, you can just like, I remember going to these meetings with moms and thinking if I have to talk one more time about potty training or breastfeeding or a poopy diaper, I am going to lose my mind because I just don't want to talk about that. I want to have an educated conversation with someone about anything but children and potty training and breastfeeding. <laughs> yes, And exactly. I remember that and just thinking, and I think that's why I shied away from events because I was just like, God, I just don't want to be a mom for a second. I want to put on some fun clothes and go have some drinks and, and just talk about whatever women talk about, which I had almost forgotten because... I was so immersed in being a mom and a wife and all that. Um, so I love this. And, and I think what you're doing is amazing because you're changing the paradigm, right? I mean, we have to change the paradigm of the way women view themselves. And, you know, this year in particular, you, we saw a little bit in the um, Olympics with Simone Biles and, and, and mental health, right? And yes. she very openly came out and kind of made a big statement about like, hey, like I'm not... I'm not mentally well enough to do this. And it was really shocking. Some people applauded her for it, but there was a lot of very mean, vicious attacks on her. And mm -hmm. I thought to myself, are we going backwards? What happens to all the other women next that want to say, you know, hey, I need, I just need some help. And so I, I think this is crucial and it ties in with, with lead and empower who she talks you know, because just like your vision of bringing women together to just be together, empower each other, same thing with us. You know, we, we, we aren't competition. We want to help each other. And probably one of my favorite things about this is that I built this huge network. You know, I can pick up my phone and just go through and be like, who, who can I reach out to on this? You know, just like, you know, what you do with your group. Um, so I love this. So, so this morph though, so we, we started out with girlfriends and Gilbert friends and this has gotten huge and now you've moved into something called Moxie. So let's talk about what is Moxie and what are you doing with Moxie? Yes. Yeah, so during, um, quarantine during the pandemic, so this was back in, in March. So my, um, last March, so my, you know, my Facebook community is all about, um, social and, and, you know, engagement and friendship and, and strict rules about no business because as much as women need that space like we were talking about just to be themselves and not to be the mom or not to be their job or whatever, there are several women out there who they just want to go, 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 be on, on, on. I need to talk about my business. I need to grow my business. And a lot of women were having a lot of problems during, you know, shutdown, during quarantine, during all those things. And, and you know, just across the board, you know, across all the states we were in, I was just feeling a lot of pressure to not help these women who were, who were struggling in their business. So that's when I decided to create an app outside of Facebook, um, because also during that time, there were a lot of people having a hard time with you know, changes in Facebook and, and algorithms and, and all, all sorts of everyone knows 
people's problems with Facebook and, uh, you know, and, and Facebook could be gone tomorrow and there goes your contacts, there goes your, your network. So I decided to, to create, uh, an app very similar to, to Facebook, um, for just for women, just to, just what we've been talking about to collaborate, not, not compete, you know, to network, to, that's where the swan comes in is, is, it, it, it was it's an all life, but especially a business as well. That women feel like they need to put this. Oh, I have everything together. I you know ask me a question, I know it. Well, that's not yeah, always true, you know. And, and in this group, um, you know, um, you're, you know, you're, 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 you're maybe the newest software or CRM or point of sale or whatever. You're having a hard time. Well, there's a whole group of women out there that you know have been in your shoes maybe last year, two years ago, going through it right now. And they can answer your question in a heartbeat because that's what it is. It's collaboration. It's support. And um, and back in you had said earlier in opening in in 2013 when I started my own my own business, my business mentor at the time had um, I was trying to uh, decide what to name my business, and she said it doesn't matter what you name it, you're going to be successful. And I said, well, <laughs> that's a bold statement. Why do you say that? And she said, because you have moxie. And I was like, all right, you just named my business for me. <laughs> so um, so that's how I named my estate sales business is, is through through that conversation. And then when I was talking to my husband about wanting to develop this, this new app for women to connect, um, I just wasn't ready to let it go. You know, that, that word still really resonated with me um, because, you know, moxie is just about know-how and, you know, getting it done, mm-hmm. you know. And I'm like, that's that's going to be it. So, um, so Moxie Inspire was uh, was born. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, and I love that you probably don't have a lot of experience creating an app, but you just decided to create an app. You know, which is pretty amazing because I feel like that's a big undertaking, and obviously you have to manage it. Um, and, and all of that. And, and I've looked at trying to create some apps for things and it was overwhelming. And I was like, I'm just going to revisit this later. So that was a big (laughs) undertaking. And, and I think it is really great that you, you stepped away from Facebook and not to dish on Facebook, but I'm not a huge fan either because it is true. I have had friends who had their whole business running through Facebook and an algorithm changed and they lost everything. And so I love the idea of being outside of this where you guys have control. It's not going to go away. And there's there's even a little bit more of a privacy built into it, you know, with your groups. Um, because Absolutely. you can choose a plan, right? So this is, this is um, tell us a little bit about, like, how the plans work and, and what you can do with that. Well, it's just, it's $99 a year. And so you can either break that down in a month. The only plans are either monthly payments or one-time payment. And the one-time is a little... Um, and more expensive, but you know, people say, "Well, Facebook is free." Well, anytime something's free, either you know you're paying for it somehow, mm-hmm. and the way you're paying for it with most social media, I'm not going to completely just bag on on Facebook here, but is 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 they're they're selling you, <laughs> they're yeah. selling your data, they're selling your information, mm-hmm. they're ad targeting you, they're you know, and if and if that's okay with you and it is for most people, then that's great, but. Um, with a subscription-based program, then I can keep all the algorithms out. I can keep all the data collecting out. I can keep, you know, all the algorithms out. I can keep all that stuff out mm-hmm. because it's not free to run a group. They're, no. you know, <laughs> Facebook is not Facebook is not a free thing. They're paying a lot of money to keep that up. Oh yeah, and they're getting, they're getting paid by people that are buying your data. Exactly. And so, um, completely private and and not have, you know not be selling my personal information, but But no, I agree with you. I mean, it's uh, one of the biggest things is when I'm trying to get into groups is two things. Yeah. I don't want to end up where my data is sold and it's crazy. I could be like, my phone's just sitting next to me and I could say like, I want some hula hoops and then hula hoops will appear on my Facebook that they're selling to me. So it's just slightly a little freaky there. Um, yeah, I I like the privacy and subscription based means, you know, I'm not going to be getting weird stuff and that it's not going to go away. Um, so I love that, and, and that's why I wanted to ask about that for our listeners who are listening. You know, and when I'm looking at this, I just went to the page. I mean, fourteen ninety nine a month. I probably that's like two coffees for me, right? That's like yeah. two five dollars Starbucks. You know, or sorry, three Starbucks coffees for me. 
Um, yeah. And I mean, how I definitely, times? yeah, I definitely try to make it as cost effective as possible because yeah. I know that, you know, women in business are, you know, a lot of them don't have a lot. When I first started my own business, I barely had, you know, two pennies to scrape together, but a networking and some of these BNIs and networking groups are hundreds and hundreds and yeah. hundreds of dollars, even a month, if not a year. I remember one of them came up to me and said, it was, oh, it's, it's, it's one of the lowest class ones. It's only 900. And I thought, what? Excuse me, 900? Um, and, and business networking has just become such a big, a big business now. And they're charging all this money. And they have all these things you have to do. Oh, you got to go to all these meetings. You could only miss two. And you've got to bring in this many leads. And you got to do this. And, you gotta, and I'm like, no, 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 no. Wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> There's got to be an easier way. And, and um, same, just yeah. make it <laughs> Same for me. I mean, I, I felt that too. I, I was so overwhelmed, but I literally just finally said no to all of them because I was exhausted trying to keep up with all of them. And I was spending all this money and I wasn't getting leads that were sticking. I wasn't. You know, like we all said we were supposed to use each other network. It wasn't happening. And I found that if I just started networking on my own and building my own group of networkers, I had more loyal people who wanted to work with, and, and I agree, it's, it's overwhelming, it's expensive, and you really have to dive into these groups, because too, when I started doing a lot of this, I was a young mother, and I was trying to balance kids, well, how am I supposed to get to this meeting at 6 o'clock in the day with, you know, I've got two, a two-year-old and a newborn, and how do I do this? And then two, not only on top of your membership fee, then every event you attended, you had to pay more money to get into that event. And it was yes. like, well, I just paid you 200 bucks and now I've got to pay another 40 bucks just to go to this event. My favorite thing is when they like tell you you're going to win an award and you still have to pay a $200 ticket price to attend your own <laughs> awards banquet. To accept the award. <laughs> right? And you're like, but wait, I, you, you nominated me. I have to pay to go get my <laughs> award. So I, I resonate with everything you say. And, and not saying that some of these groups aren't fantastic. They are. Oh, but yes. I love that this, there isn't a bunch of catches where you have to do so much stuff. You know, you're not going to get advertised like heck. Your dad is not being sold. This isn't going to get shut down overnight because, you know, of an algorithm. So I think this is great. And I, th I think it's super affordable. Like I said, I mean, I will sh shamelessly tell you I spend a lot of money on coffee that I shouldn't. Um, <laughs> I always tell my husband, I don't want diamonds. I just want coffee. So if you just put up with my coffee issues, you know, we'll be good. Um, but I'm sure I spend at least 25 to $45 a month in coffee. I know. It's so <laughs> horrible. I'm just totally letting the cat out of the bag. But when I look at $14.99, I'm like, that's, that's, that's so affordable. $14.99, yeah. I just put that on and then, auto debit, and I'm good. If you, you join, you set your profile up as a, you know, as a business profile, because that's what it is. It's a business networking net, um, network for women. And so if you're looking for someone in a particular geographical area, like you need someone local, you can look it up by where they are. You can look up by what they do for a living. Like, oh, I need a florist or I need a handyman. You can just, it, it just brings up all the different women. And, um, you know, and, and I'm not at all saying that not to support, you know, male owned businesses or male owned. I'm not trying to say, mm -hmm. you know, I'm just saying, if there's two equally great companies and one of them's owned by a woman, let's support each other. Because <laughs> yeah. there's not enough of that going on. And here's the thing. I love my male counterparts. I promote them and support them all the time. Um, but I, I really believe in really, I mean, and what you're doing, Allie, and, and what I'm doing and what several other women are trying to do is really start this movement. It's a movement of women supporting women without you know, strings attached without yeah. the competition. I mean, let's just be honest. Women are vicious. I, I've had more issues with women than I have with men. I mean, the guys are pretty straightforward. They lay it out. I've never normally had issues where they're sneaky or gossiping or telling, you know, I, mean, I haven't because guys are guys, but women, that's been a whole nother story. And, and I naively would be like, very go when I was young and I go this, I just didn't understand why women would do this, and I was very naive about it. Um, and then it hit me one day. I was like, "Why do I have to? Why do we have to be like this? You know, why do I have to worry about women stabbing me in the back or gossiping about me or whatever? Like, the, why? Why are they so mean?" <laughs> and I get that we 
have worked really hard to get where we're at. And we probably had some bad experiences in that. And we become very protective of ourselves and our territory. And maybe that's just built into us, right? You know, maybe as moms and wives, we're like territorial or whatever. Um, but this is, this is I love it because it, it's, it's changing the way that women are thinking. And this is why I'm so excited that you're going to be at She Talks because this is exactly what we're doing. And, and you're going to be talking about this at She Talks, right? Can you give us kind of just like a little summary? I mean, don't give it all away because we want <laughs> people to buy tickets. But give us just maybe like yes. a little summary of what you're going to hit on while you're there. Well, just like you were saying, like, um, it's always been, you know, on the tip in my mind, what, what came first? What has made women like this? You know, why are so many women highly competitive with each other and caddy and all these things? And then if you really look back at what we are inundated with, what we have been inundated with for our whole lives, the people we've looked up to in movies and, um, you know, in, in media or whatever, it's always this the strong woman who's had to fight and claw and and, and women who are trying to, to steal what what's hers and and so we're we're all this is surrounding us and like, oh we need to be like that. Well where's where's all in the media these women who are are reaching back with the hand saying, Here let, let me help you up. You know, I did the hard work, you know, I, I wanna help you now. Yeah. And then you help someone else. Like where are those um people in, in media and, and movies there's there hardly any yeah. you know so so speaking so that's kind of what you know you were just talking about with that but what I'm going to be speaking at, at the sheep the she talk is is how um how that just that collaboration and that friendship and that networking is so important not only for women in business as far as um you know, monetarily, because, you know, you, you know, making those contacts is, is, is very important for, you know, monetarily for your business, but it's also super important psychologically. Mm-hmm. Women are just made to need other women, you know, we're, you know, to, to talk to and to commiserate and, and to not be that perfect person. Like I told you know, about the Swan Complex, mm-hmm. um, the whole purpose behind all my groups, both the networking group and the friendship group. And, you know, like I said, so many women just have it in their heads that I need to be strong. I don't need anybody. I can, you know, I'm going to be vicious. I'm going to be this. And, and that's just, I'm just super toxic <laughs> and, yeah. and it's not going to get you very far. Absolutely. And if you do get far, you're not going to be happy once you get there Absolutely. because you're going to be standing alone Yeah. and no one likes standing alone. Absolutely. hundred percent on that. I agree with you. I, I, it just, you're, I mean, you're hitting everything that I love. And so this is why I'm super excited because, um, we need to talk about this. And after 18 months of really being distanced from what I like to call all our sisters, you know, our soul sisters, I feel like it's time to bring that back out and make sure that we are on top of that. And that women know that like, Hey, you don't have to be vicious to get to where you're at. And, and um, I very much learned that as I was climbing the ladder and I was watching other women and I was going, why, why are they doing this? Why? I just want to help you. I remember telling one of my bosses who was being really cruel to me, I said, listen, I just want to make you look good. I don't want your job. Like, I don't understand, like, why are you treating me like this? You know, and she didn't know what to do because she'd never had anyone ask her that before. (laughs) But I just (laughs) thought I'd be real with her. And she was kind of like, I don't, I don't have an answer for that. So I love this. And I I don't want to give away too much more because I want women to buy tickets to this. Um, (laughs) Also, we've had high school girls at this event. So, you know, if you're listening right now and you think you want to do a mother daughter thing, definitely. I would say ages 15 and up are welcome. We keep it clean. Um, and these are some great topics for young women. I wish as a young woman, I had known about networking and, you know, these things, as you mentioned. Um, and we have a lot of young women who are very entrepreneurial. And so I love for them to see that they don't have to be stuck in, in a certain profession that they can reach outside of their box. Well, before we end this podcast, I wanted to talk about what's coming up for you. Um, we had talked a bit about a streaming TV network. So fill us in on that. I know it's just kind of building out. Yes, so um, I have a, a new television show uh, that should be, I say should be because I have a lot of things I'm juggling, but should be premiering in uh, late October. Um, it's called Girlfriend's Guide to Travel, which I'll be traveling to some of the world's, the, 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 well, first of all, United States, hopefully the world someday, um, top tourist destinations and um, 
speaking with local women about kind of an insider's girlfriend's guide, you know, like where's the best place for a glass of wine and just to talk where you don't, you're not going to be hit on by a bunch of men, you know, what's your favorite little boutique to shop at? What's your, you know, what's the best hotel for, you know, walking the city and just, and just kind of giving you that inside girlfriend's guide to that. And yeah, that show will be premiering on um, my own streaming network. <laughs> uh, my partners and I have started our um, own streaming network called Legarty Media. Um, it is a new streaming network that's right next to Hulu and Netflix on your television sh- on your television sets right now, which is super super exciting for me. Uh, when I downloaded it on Amazon Fire, I was like, oh, my gosh, that's my network. Um, but what it does is it takes original content, takes people who have a message, you know, podcasters, um, YouTubers, just people with a good, uh, positively impactful message and takes them from, you know, this big pool of, you know, little fishes and, and puts them up, you know, 4.1 billion viewers, three wow. three. 300 or 213 countries and just amplifies their message and um just we're just looking for you know positive impactful um producers and hosts that want to make a difference oh my gosh okay so you have to come to coronado because it has (laughs) the best little boutiques and things around where i live and we will walk through downtown coronado and do this because as you said that i'm like okay uh, wine a bit is like the best place to go get a glass of wine and like my favorite boutiques I'm like you gotta come you gotta come here so we'll definitely do that I would love and to film on Coronado I love Coronado you know you may have to do because we may get you at some other she talks uh, a, a little workshop on this whole look Le, Le, is it Legretti Le, Le it's a legacy. so it's it's the words um legacy and integrity put together ah. because we want our network to leave a legacy of integrity got it okay so you may have to give a workshop on this because a lot of women may want to know how they could be on this streaming network I've, I've i've got actually one woman in mind right now um that i know would be huge on this so we will definitely have to talk more about that so, but we're going to be ending the show and thank you so much. So if they want to go in and, and check out Moxie, it is moxieinspired.com, right? Yes, moxieinspired.com. Um, it's powered by the Mighty Network, so you're not going to see it just if you go to the App Store. If you do go to the App Store, you look for Mighty Networks and then Mighty Inspire, Moxie Inspire on top of that. Okay. Um, and then Legarty, um, the streaming is legartymedia.com. Okay. Awesome. We will put all these links as well. So if you're driving right now and listening, don't worry. You can go back, click on this link later, and it'll give you all of Allie's information. Also, if you want to meet Allie in person or hear her talk, she's going to be at our Arizona She Talks October 2nd. To get tickets, is it is www.leadandempowerher.com. We may get Allie at a couple other events. We'll find out soon if she's going to be at those. Um, but this is the time, ladies. It, it is the time now to get back out there. Our theme for this whole event is called Rising from the Ashes. And it's truly, it, it, if you look at our, our picture, it is a woman who is walking out of fire, right? And, and I just felt like that was the essence of the last 18, 20 months of our, our years, year last year. And so I just feel like we're all kind of walking out of this fire. We're brushing off the ashes. We're just opening up and we're going, listen, we're going to rise from this and go back at it. And so that's the theme and that's what's driving us. So thank you so much for being on the show, Ali. This has been awesome. As I always say, live, love, laugh, and always be your authentic self.